My name is Zaheer A. Shah, MDJD. I'm the principal and founding partner of Shah & Associates. It's a medical malpractice and personal injury law firm based currently in Tempe, Arizona. Well, medical negligence, before we talk about that, let's talk a little bit about just what negligence itself is. So negligence is essentially a failure to act reasonably. That's the standard that is used by the courts to determine what is a proper or improper act. Now, let me give you an example of that. So with respect to the automobile industry, over time, negligence or a failure to act responsibly or reasonably evolves. For example, brake lights. Initially, there were no brake lights on a car, but then over time, we determined that in order for the car to be reasonably safe, it should have brake lights. And then eventually, we evolved to the point where you also have uh, safety harnesses, safety belts, and now even airbags. And I'm sure the future will hold even further advances that determine or define what reasonable is. And the reasonable is the exact opposite of negligence. Because the medical space is a much more sophisticated service area where you have highly trained providers, medical negligence has to be really carefully defined. And the term of art that's used in that space is standard of care. So we expect all providers not to be outstanding providers, but to at least meet a basic threshold standard of care that they deliver to the patients that they are caring for. How is that standard of care arrived that will distinguish negligence from something that is not negligent? Well, there's a lot of factors that go into that. It can be de determined or dependent on where the provider is practicing. So if you're in a remote rural area, the standard of care may be completely different than if you're practicing in Boston. If you are a specialist versus a general practitioner, the standard of care may vary. Ultimately, negligence or meeting the standard of care or lack thereof is one of the critical elements that are necessary to prove in order to have an effective or successful medical malpractice lawsuit. So it's one of three really critical areas of the litigation of one of my client's injuries at the hands of a medical provider that I have to fulfill. So negligence, as we understand it, is about standard of care. And the real analysis is, is did the provider meet that standard of care? Because if they didn't, that's medical negligence. Well, a lot of people, when they think about medical negligence, they assume that as long as they find negligence, or they've been the victim of negligence, that they've got a lawsuit. And oftentimes I have to be the bearer of bad news, which is to state that no, there's a lot more that goes into whether or not you're going to have a viable medical malpractice lawsuit. So what I oftentimes suggest is, is begin with what was the harm or injury that was, had been sustained. If the harm or injury is substantial and likely permanent, then that's a case that needs to be investigated more fully. Once you do that, then you have to look at, was there a standard of care violation? Was the provider that rendered the care that resulted in this substantial and permanent injury, was that care above that standard of care or was it below? Now keep in mind again, we're not expecting our providers to be extraordinary caregivers or to practice in the latest state of the art. That's not what the law requires or expects of them. There is a lowest common denominator, however, which is communally determined by the community of providers who all would agree that this is the basic minimum that must be fulfilled in order for that provider in that space at that time with that particular patient is meeting the standard of care. Now, as you can imagine, that becomes somewhat controversial. So the doctor defendant is going to find medical experts that say she met the standard of care. As a plaintiff's attorney, one of my obligations or responsibilities is to find medical experts that will further my client's case, which is to establish that there was in fact a breach or a violation of the standard of care. So medical negligence or a violation of the standard of care is a critical element in furthering a medical malpractice lawsuit, but it's not the only one. So we were talking about the elements that are required or must be fulfilled in order for there to be a successful medical malpractice lawsuit, for there to be a resolution to it that is hopefully in favor of your client. Well, you clearly have to have medical negligence. That's that standard of care that we've been talking about. Our argument is if there's been a violation or a breach in the standard of care, that equals medical negligence. But that's not enough. 
we then have to prove that that medical negligence actually resulted or caused the damages or injuries that we're claiming harm for. And sometimes what happens is, is there can in fact be medical negligence, but there may be some other intervening event or some other complication that actually resulted in the harms. And so we have to very closely, proximately is the legal term, but I, I tell my clients that means it has to be closely connected, not just a general sense of, well, this could have caused that, but no, we have to yoke it together very nicely and tightly that the medically negligent act is what directly and proximately caused the harms for which we are now seeking recovery. Sometimes a case can actually fail, not because there wasn't any negligence and not because there weren't sufficient damages that are substantial and permanent, but because of an inability to connect causally the medical negligence and that harm, which is why one of the medical experts that are utilized in medical malpractice lawsuits are actually causation experts. So you can have a standard of care expert to talk about how the standard of care was violated or breached, but then you also will require a causation expert who can use her special expertise to say, I believe based upon a review of all of the facts in this case, that that medically negligent act in fact caused the harms for which we are now seeking damages or recovery.